Now, everyone has their own opinion and it's just that. It's an opinion and there's nothing wrong with an opinion, but most people don't like looking at the facts. It's easier to go just making money online. It's, it's a scam. It doesn't work. It's much easier to be doubtful and skeptical and say, oh, the only way to live life is working for a boss in a job. The only way to live life is to, you know, nobody can make money on their own because I haven't. It's a way of saving face. But if you look at the facts and you can go to my channel and you could check out my videos and you can check out my testimonial reels, I've had many, 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 many people who have been able to quit their jobs, who have been able to live financially free. About five people so far have become millionaires just based off of what I've taught. And those are the only, only the people that have actually spoken up about it. The facts are there are a lot of internet businesses and it is the fastest growing area with the most opportunity in the entire internet. And just because I'm teaching people how to make money online doesn't mean that this doesn't work, which is crazy. So what I want you to do now, if you still think I'm not a real person or I'm a scam or this is all crazy, I encourage you to actually look at the other side of the coin. Maybe you've seen skeptics that have said, John Cristani's a scam. I see them too. And it's funny, sometimes, you know, they, you know, if they, most of these people have not even gone through any of my training courses. My goal is to be the number one teacher, number one marketing teacher in the world. Look up my name and then look up interview or podcast. Look up John Cristani interview or look up John Cristani podcast. And then judge for yourself if I'm a real person or not, if my experience is real, if I actually made my money being an affiliate marketer, if I really just, you know, acted like it and, you know, I made money teaching, right? Which is funny because most teachers don't make any money. Most teachers have the exact opposite thing. They don't make any money and they don't, still don't make any money. So check out an interview of me or check out a podcast of me. You can find things from years ago. Before I had any training courses whatsoever, I've been being interviewed for the amazing things the income that I've been able to create as a solopreneur, as a boy, as a young man who wanted to travel the world and experience life to the fullest with money and with fun and girls and action sports and all that stuff. Before the John Cristani that actually was teaching and had training courses, showing people how to make money on the internet, right? I was successful and you can check out interviews or podcasts from years ago. Check them out for yourself. I have a lot of ones more recently, but this will show you the other side of me. John Cristani interview or John Cristani podcast. And I encourage you to check out, go to my channel, my homepage or my channel page, whatever it is, and check out the testimonials. Listen to some of their stories. Look at some of their screenshots. Hear what they're about. Check for yourself if all of these, if I just paid for them on Fiverr, right? Oh, we just paid people to do testimonials for him on Fiverr. Because a lot of people do do that. But I'm a real person. This is really possible. Oftentimes the reason why people call others scams or fraudulents or charlatans is because they don't believe in themselves. The biggest reason why I see people fail starting their own business it's because they don't believe in themselves and that causes them to jump around prematurely from business model to business model to business model to business model lost in life all alone you don't have to be that person check out an interview or check out a podcast take the red pill and see how far or the blue pill i forget which one it was but see how far the rabbit hole goes because there is a rabbit hole here and I went through it too. I was in your seat 10 years ago or so. I thought I was the ultimate skeptic and then I started, but then I decided that I wasn't going to be like everyone else and I made a change and you can too. So give me the benefit of the doubt. All I'm asking is the benefit of the doubt. If you're willing to give me the benefit of the doubt, type in benefit of the doubt 
right down below in the comments. And also let me know if you watched any interviews or podcasts, let me know what your favorite ones are. I'm actually a huge watcher of interviews and podcasts myself, mainly interviews, and I try to find billionaires. I try to find old interviews of them before they were billionaires. Now, I'm gonna give you a little bit of training about what is the best kind of mindset for success. And these are four rules that I don't talk about a lot because not a lot of people are interested in understanding how to be successful. The first rule of success or for becoming successful is who are you listening to? You have to ask yourself, who are you trusting? Is it the people that you're hearing from? And you can even look them up. The people who have written negative articles about anybody you're looking at, Tony Robbins or whomever, are they where you want to be in life? I see a lot of people, I see a lot of liberals that complain about, you know, the, the ocean or they complain about what somebody else is doing. Complain, complain, complain. That's our society. Wine, be entitled. Are these people complaining? Are they where you want to be in life? Are these people complaining? Are they successful? Are these people complaining and whining? Do they have happy relationships? I don't know. I'm just saying before you trust somebody, just because they're saying something negative, ask yourself, who are you listening to? Is this person where I want to be in life? Our brain instinctually looks for the negative in situations. So that's why complainers and whiners and negative people get more attention because it's natural, it's biological. But you have to ask yourself, is this person or these people, do they have what I want? Very important. I'm not gonna name names, but there's one person who's posted up a video about me on YouTube I actually looked him up and I said, who is this person bat bashing me? And he was bashing me for my haircut, mainly. He just didn't, he'd never been through one of my training courses, right? But he just didn't like my style. He didn't like the fact that I use money in my videos. And I looked him up and if you're looking to be successful, this person was doing an unpaid internship, okay? You know, he's not making any money. I, I don't know why he's trying to act like he's an authority in the space of success or internet business, right? Who are you listening to? Very important question to ask yourself. Another important question to ask yourself if you're looking to be successful is, are you teachable, right? Now, we're assuming here that you're listening to the right people. You're listening to people who are actually successful. Because if you're listening to people who aren't successful, if you're listening to your friend who has this great idea, he has this good hookup for a job that can make you a lot of money, but he himself is broke. That's not the right people. Listen to people who are successful, who are where you wanna be. Are you teachable, right? Because even if you're listening to the right people, if you're not teachable, kind of nothing goes anywhere, right? Now to figure out if you're teachable, there's two things. There's one, the willingness to learn, and there's the willingness to change, okay? You have to be willing to learn, and you have to be willing to change. If you're not willing to learn, Nothing happens, right? It goes in one ear out the other. Because if you're gonna sit there and you're gonna say, right, okay, how is what this guy is saying screwed up, right? This guy, John Cristani, he, he disclaims in his videos that results may vary and that, that not everyone's successful and results are not guaranteed. He's not guaranteeing results and he's, and he's saying most people fail with starting their own business, right? Right? So what is he saying that's wrong, right? Ah, uh, this doesn't work, oh, this doesn't work, this method doesn't work, this can't work for this reason. If you're looking to figure out how things are wrong, if you're watching teaching material with a filter that it's not true already, you have no willingness to learn. And this is gonna screw you up. You're not gonna get off the mark, even if you're listening to the right people. And the second component is, change. Let's say you are willing to learn, but if you aren't willing to change your habits, I teach about, I teach that marketing's fun, right? I love marketing. I love getting out there and trying new things and failing. I love sending a hundred messages in a day just to see if anybody responds to me. It used to be I would just message people on the internet for affiliate promotions. Then I would message people to be affiliates of mine. Now I message 
investors to invest in my company. It doesn't matter. I love trying out new things and seeing if they fail and it's fun. I'm a crash test dummy and if I say take that frame, put a new frame around marketing because a lot of people think that marketing or sales is just constant torture. It's failure, right? You have to fail a lot of times to be successful. And you know what? That's true, but if you look at it that way, if you're learning how to play basketball and you look at every time you miss the basket as a failure, you know, you're gonna beat yourself up. You're gonna get out of basketball. You're not gonna be a successful basketball player. You might understand the concept, okay, most, most entrepreneurs fail most of the time. Okay, I get that, I have to reframe it, but you're not willing to do it, right? You're not willing to do the work of reframing. You're not willing to actually say, Heck yeah, I'm excited, I failed, right? You're like, no, I'm English, I, I don't get excited. I don't, I don't, you know, everything's, everything's negative, right? You're not gonna be a successful entrepreneur that way. The third lesson about success I wanna teach you is you need to have a training and a balance. You need to have a level of training and action balance. You know, you, 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 you can vary it up, whatever works for you, but a good, a good measure is 50-50. Spend 50% of your time learning, spend 50% of your time putting it into action. Because one of the things that happens is, especially when people are learning through the internet, it's very scary to actually go out there and maybe put stuff into action on your own. You don't have, you know, you don't have that peer feedback. Spending, if you watch a 15 minute video of mine, I tell people, okay, this, you know, I have a 30 minute videos on how to do some marketing tactic, right? I say go out and spend 30 minutes actually doing it. Because if you don't do it, you won't learn it. It's like if you're playing, trying to learn basketball. If you just watched a bunch of videos about how to play basketball, you're not gonna get good at basketball, are you? No. Let's say you watch a 15 minute video about how to dribble a ball playing basketball and then you go out and you actually do it and you actually dribble the ball and you play basketball for 15 minutes and you say, okay, okay, I'm kind of getting it. Then you go back and you say, okay, I'm gonna watch another video about how to dribble a basketball. Again, a little more advanced one. And you watch the video and then you try it out. That's a good balance. And then you're actually getting somewhere. But if you don't have that balance, it's not gonna help you out. What I see a lot of my students doing is they will binge watch 50 videos of mine, 20 videos of mine, and they won't do anything. And then all of a sudden they've watched 30 hour, 20 hours of videos of mine and their minds are mush. It's like mashed potatoes in there. It's just like, I don't know what to do. He said, you know, he said, write long emails sometimes, write short emails other times. He said, you know, use clickbait, you know, headlines. And then he said, don't use clickbait headlines if you're using these things. That, you know, it's like all uh, marketing, you know, marketing's a crazy thing. There's a lot of like contradictions, right? So have that balance. Now, the fourth tip for success is kind of interesting, is the stages, is understanding the stages of competency. So the four stages of building a skill, right? Whether you're building marketing or whether you're building sales or whether you're doing anything, okay? Handiwork, gardening, etc., is you start out up here, which is this area called unconscious. You are unconsciously bad. You are bad at gardening and you don't even know that you're bad at gardening, okay? You're bad at marketing and you don't even know why you're bad at marketing. Okay. You don't even know. Now this is where everyone starts. We suck at a skill and we don't even know that we really suck at the skill. We don't even know how to look at what part of the skill we suck at. We just suck. For instance, like snowboarding, right? I went into snowboarding and I thought I was gonna be great at it. You know, I was like, oh, I'm gonna be the best. You know, I, I, I ski, you know, I've been skiing since I was like three years old. I'm like, I'm gonna be great at snowboarding. You know, it's just, a, it's a board. It's like I skateboard, so I ski, so I should, snowboard pretty easily. And I was bad and I didn't even know how or why I was bad. I didn't even understand what, what parts were bad. But I did it a little bit, right? I started doing snowboarding a little bit and I moved to the second phase of competency. I moved to where I knew, right? I knew I was bad, okay? So I knew how sucky I was. I was well aware, okay? And I knew the parts of snowboarding that I sucked at. I knew that I wasn't edging right. I knew that I wasn't turning the correctly. I knew I wasn't facing my body downhill the right way, right? I knew that I wasn't doing the correct things. I knew I wasn't putting my weight on my board the right way when I was 
turning and that was causing me to flip, catch an edge and flip over. So I had an idea of why I was bad, but I was still bad was the point. I was still falling down all the time. Now, the third phase of competency, it comes with practice and it's when you think about it, you can be good. When you really focus, when you, you're really noticing everything, you're really trying, you can do stuff good. So when you're really looking at, when you're really thinking about where your board is and where your, your weight is on your board, you can kind of turn, but you have to think real hard. It's really tiring, right? I don't know if you've ever tried a new skill. Let me know if any of you do any sort of sports here. Let me know in the comments below what sports you do. If it's football or soccer, baseball, cross, skiing, whatever. Kite surfing, surfing. I love sports. But you start getting good, but you really have to think about it and it's tiring. But that's a that's the third place of competency. And over time, you'll move from being really bad at marketing and not knowing why you're bad to getting good at marketing. But you'll have to really think hard about it and it'll be really tiresome and stressful. And eventually you'll get to the fourth phase of building a skill, which comes after a very long time, years and years and years, perhaps even a lifetime of practice which is being unconsciously competent. And unconsciously competent means you don't even have to think about it anymore. You just do it that way, right? You don't have to think about how to be influential. It just happens. You don't have to think about how to write a marketing ad. You just do it. It just rolls off the tongue. And that's why a lot of people say, oh, it looks so easy for you to do this. Or people might say, oh, it's so easy for you to, I don't know, weave a basket or do your makeup or whatever it is that you do. And that's because you've spent a lot of time doing it. You're unconsciously competent at that skill. But it doesn't start off that way. People aren't just naturally that way. I just wasn't naturally a good marketer. It seems natural because I do it every day and it just comes just what I do now. But it took a lot of effort to get there. And there's phases and everybody has to go through those phases. So if you enjoyed this training about success, I hope this has allowed you to see, you know, I love teaching, honestly. And once again, I implore you to check out an interview or a podcast of mine. I'm genuinely trying to help people quit their jobs. Jobs are an unnatural institution. I'm not gonna go on a rant here, but I believe that the power, the rich and powerful of our society have created so many rules, so much stuff to keep the regular person in their place. And I'm trying to empower people. So give it a chance, give yourself a chance. If you're looking to be on the road to successful, keep in mind, once again, who are you listening to? Because those are the people you will become. Are you teachable? Are you willing to learn? And are you willing to change? Do you have good training balance? Are you just learning? Or are you just taking action without learning? Have a good balance. And last but not least, understand that learning a skill is a process. You're gonna suck for a while, but it gets better. And it's gonna be a lot of hard work, but it gets better. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you enjoyed most about this video. Let me know if you have any questions for me and talk to you soon.